Today, we're going to talk about mindfulness, and I am going to share with you my mindfulness practice that I hope you can use every day. So today we're going to talk about mindfulness and mindfulness kind of makes me laugh because I wasn't really big into mindfulness. A few years ago, a friend recommended that I just needed to calm down. You see, I've got a lot of energy as probably you can tell. And she said, why not try these AM and PM yoga tapes? She said, they'll be really good. So I put the first one in and huh, we're going so slow. I fast forwarded to figure out where the action was, right? And when I told her, she said, you got it all wrong. You have got to learn how to take things slower and you've got to learn mindfulness. And then again, about a year and a half ago, I was speaking at a first responders conference and they were talking about all of these first responders. The audience was thousands of people about how they practice mindfulness. And I learned there that all of the branches of the military right now are practicing mindfulness as our top CEOs in the com company. And if it's good enough for them, hey, it's good enough for me. So I began a process. I began a process. And you've got to begin to think of mindfulness as training your brain. You know how we go out, we train our bodies and we work out and we get our body strong. Well, mindfulness is the same, only it's taking your brain to the gym. And so a practice of mindfulness helps you. It helps you calm down. It helps you think better. It helps you focus. And in times like now, when we are in so much stress, it helps you really de-stress. So I thought what I would do today, I'm not going to go into meditation, but I'm going to take you through because I needed a process. I needed steps. And I found that if I followed these six steps that I'm going to share with you today, I could do it for 20, 30 minutes. Now, I know James Clear, who wrote Atomic Habits, I just read it, and he said, sometimes when you want to bring in a new habit, do it for one minute or two minutes. I don't care how long you practice mindfulness, but I think that this might be something that would really benefit you if you incorporated it into your morning or evening. So I'm going to start. You find a great place to sit. For me, I sit on a chair that I sit in every morning, and I do mine about 5, 5.30 a.m. It's when I first get up, I do the practice. And the first step is with your eyes open, it's connecting with the senses. So with your eyes open, you listen. And it's really interesting because at 5.30 in the morning, I hear the birds talking to each other. I wish I knew what they were saying, but they are talking all over my yard. Sometimes at 5.30 in the morning, I hear a cat outside. These are things that I never noticed before because before I would get up, make my coffee and just come in here and start working. But it's interesting how you can listen to the morning sounds. I hear a car drive by and we begin to settle our brain. We begin to smell the coffee that I have perking. We begin then to gradually close our eyes. Once we close our eyes, we focus on our breath. And our breath for me is three to four breaths in, hold it and four or five breaths out. And I try to get a rhythm of breathing going before I've even started to think about meditation. Now that I've got my eyes closed and I'm breathing, step number three is we do a body scan. And it's really interesting because when I do a body scan, starting at the top of my head, I scan, I, I think about my eyes, I think about the scan going through my nose, maybe my ears. Sometimes when I get down to my knees, which sometimes hurt me, I can release that pain. I know it sounds weird, but it works. So we do a body scan, step number three, from the top of our head all the way through our entire body until we hit our toes. So now we're breathing. We've relaxed. We feel our body getting much more comfortable. Step number four are our thoughts. And this is a tough one for me because I thought when you meditated, I thought when we were doing mindfulness you had to eliminate the thoughts in your head. And sometimes I would think about getting rid of the thoughts so much that that thought overtook my entire mindfulness process. But this practice, excuse me, took over my mindfulness practice. But when we begin, what we're supposed to do is notice our thoughts and go, hmm, I'm noticing that I'm thinking about this. And we try gradually to just push them away. And eventually, what I have learned, I've been doing this now for several years, is that sometimes I can sit for a long time with no thoughts. And that's good. That's really good because we're opening up our mind. We're opening up our mind to actually to help new thoughts come in when we're not meditating. So then we are noticing our thoughts and we're letting them drift in and they're letting them drift out. 
The next phase, phase number five, is the best one for me. It's about people. I open my mind up now and I allow people's faces to come in. And it's amazing sometimes who comes in. It could be someone from my high school days. I had no idea I even was thinking about them. But as the face comes into my mind, I bless them. I wish them well. I wish them health. I wish them happiness and I wish them a peaceful life. Then I open it up to thinking about my street and my neighbors. And then I think about my community. Sometimes I think about my speaker friends. And then I think about our country. And then I think about the world. In our minds, we are connecting. And that's how I do my mindfulness. At the very end, before I close it down, I have three wishes. I wish that I can be kinder. I wish that I can be more grateful and appreciative. And I wish for myself to have better health. I hope you learned something today. And I hope that tomorrow you go out there and you practice your brain muscle. You work on that brain muscle. You take your brain to the gym and you start a practice of mindfulness. Thanks, guys. It's Karen McCullough. Take a deep breath.